welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgeway. Today I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 17th of December 1559, 55-year-old Matthew Parker was consecrated as Queen Elizabeth's Archbishop of Canterbury. It was an office which Parker did not want and would not have accepted if he had not been so much bound to the mother, that is to say, Anne Boleyn, by a promise that he made a few days before Anne's arrest in 1536. Let me tell you a bit more about Parker, his life, and that meeting with Anne Boleyn. Matthew Parker was born on the 6th of August 1504 in the parish of St Saviour in Norwich, East Anglia. He was born the son of a worsted weaver, but his destiny wasn't weaving. Parker was destined for the church and for royal service too. In around 1520, Parker began his studies at Corpus Christi College in Cambridge, graduating with a BA in 1525. And it was there that he met men interested in evangelical reform, like Thomas Bilney, who was martyred in 1531. Parker went on to do a master's and was elected a fellow of the college in 1527. By this time, he was also a priest. After gaining a Bachelor of Theology and a doctorate too, he was appointed as one of Queen Anne Boleyn's chaplains in 1535, and it was Anne's patronage which led him to being appointed Dean of the Collegiate Church of Stoke by Clare in Suffolk in November 1535. After her execution in 1536, Parker served as chaplain to King Henry VIII. In December 1544, Parker was elected Master of Corpus Christi College and then Vice-Chancellor in January 1545. In his article on the Anne Boleyn Files website, which I'll give you a link to, an article called The Cambridge Connections, author Robert Parry explains that Parker was one of the primary architects of the emerging Anglican doctrine that shaped the English Reformation, and after the death of Henry VIII, he continued to rise to prominence under the reforming governments of Edward VI and was a close associate of the two most powerful statesmen of Edward's reign, Edward Seymour and John Dudley. He would have been intimately associated, therefore, with the influential humanist movement of the first part of the 16th century that was centred on Cambridge and consisted of scholars such as John Cheek, William Grindle, Anthony Cook, Roger Ascombe, John Dee, and perhaps most significantly of all, William Sissel. Parker's royal favour led to him being made Dean of Lincoln and presented for the prebend of Corringham, Lincolnshire in 1552. However, things changed when the Catholic Mary I came to the throne in July 1553. As a married churchman, Parker was deprived of his many offices and instead focused on writing theological works. His time out of the limelight was short, though, as Mary died in November 1558 and her half-sister, Elizabeth I, came to the throne. In 1559, Queen Elizabeth appointed Matthew as her Archbishop of Canterbury. He had been offered the post in 1558, but had stalled in accepting it. Parker believed that he was not right for the post and, having recently fallen from his horse, also not fit enough. But Elizabeth wanted him in that post and Parker felt that he had no choice. He'd made a promise to Elizabeth's mother, Anne Boleyn, back in 1536 and he had to stand by that and serve his queen. Parker wrote to Sir Nicholas Bacon, Though my heart would right fain serve my sovereign lady, the Queen's Majesty, in more respects than of mine allegiance, not forgetting what words her grace's mother said to me of her, not six days before her apprehension, yet this my painful infirmity will not suffer it in all manner servings. He also referred to this promise in a letter to William Cecil, Lord Burley, in 1572. Yea, if I'd not been so much bound to the mother, I would not so soon have granted to serve the daughter in this place. 
We don't know what exactly Anne had said to him six days before her arrest around the 26th of April. But as Eric Ives points out, that charge and the debt he felt he owed to Anne stayed with him for the rest of his life. It was enough of a promise for him to take a job he didn't want. Whatever Anne had said to him, he felt bound to serve and help her daughter. Did Anne Boleyn know that there was a plot against her? Was it just a coincidence that she spoke to Parker about this just days before her arrest? Was it just Elizabeth's spiritual welfare she was talking about? We'll never know because Parker does not give any more detail about the conversation. Matthew Parker served as Elizabeth's Archbishop of Canterbury until his death on the 17th of May 1575. He is known for being one of the men responsible for the 39 Articles of Religion, which were established in 1563, and which are seen as the historic defining statements of Anglican doctrine in relation to the controversies of the English Reformation. He may have been a great theologian, an influential churchman, but for me, he was a man who did something he really didn't want to do because of a promise. What a loyal and noble man. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about a Catholic churchman, lawyer and writer who wrote a book against Henry VIII's great matter and who ended up in prison in Elizabeth's reign. Do make sure you're subscribed, click there, and that you've hit the bell to find out all about him. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 17th of December 1538, Pope Paul III announced the excommunication of King Henry VIII. Henry had been threatened with excommunication several times, but his desecration of one of the holiest shrines in Europe was the final straw for the Pope. Find out how Henry VIII, who'd once been defender of the faith, had upset the Pope in last year's video. Find a link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. Please do give me a like if you've enjoyed this video and please feel free to leave a comment. I'll see you very soon.